Hi. <sighs> so I'm going to talk with you about resilience. And uh, one of the things I've been finding out, I think, over time is that it takes a lot, I think, to be successful in business. I think there's a lot of people out there that have uh, a lot on the ball, make decisions rationally. You know, they're good at uh, human skills and they're analytical. They can put ideas into action, that kind of thing. But one of the things that I'm finding is that this issue of resilience is probably uh, as important and maybe more important than the others. There's a lot of people with a lot on the ball, but unfortunately don't have the resilience. And uh, when, when I think about resilience, I guess I'm picturing, I don't know what it's like for you, but when I picture me on the job, uh, I guess the metaphor, th the metaphor that I would use is a merry-go-round. Okay, a merry-go-round. So I picture you come to work, you know, and it's like you get on the merry-go-round of work. You know, so the thing kind of starts out, and you're on this merry-go-round, and you see your coworkers there, you know, and every once in a while they get off their horse and they come over on yours, and you have a little meeting, you know, you have a meeting. Sometimes they don't come over, they, they kind of text mail you. <laughs> That's an uplifting thing. And so it's, it's sort of like that. And so the merry-go-round metaphor, I think, uh, used to work, but I think today, probably roller coaster is, is what it is, you know. So, in other words, you, you kind of you get, it, you get there in the morning and, and it's, it's like you're at the dip and then you start kind of going up the hill and you're struggling up and then it feels good as you go down and you're going back up again and you're up and down and up and down, et cetera, and it's just kind of nuts. And I, I think what we got to do is we got to learn how to cope with that, cope with this feeling of up and down and reacting and responding and being resilient, uh, being elastic, uh, being responsive to what just happened. And, and, and that's easier to talk about than to do. So what do we do? You know, what do we do exactly? Uh, I, I guess I picture myself in the morning, it's like even before you get on the job, you're carrying some apples with you, all right? So, and, and those are the things that you're thinking about, and you're juggling those apples. You're, you've been on your cell phone, maybe on the drive-in, or there's other things going on, and as you walk in, you're already juggling a couple of these apples two or three of them. And then you walk in, and so you walk in, you know, through the, through the front desk, and somebody says, hey, here's another one for you. We just took a voicemail, or here's a message. And so you say, okay, that's good. And then you kind of walk through other, other people's cubicles or offices or whatever, and they're throwing apples out to you. And some of the apples are fresh, but some are a little bit kind of soft and rotten, you know. And so you get the rotten ones, and then you continue. Somebody throws a kumquat over the top of there you know, cubicle, and you get that, and you can, so now you got six apples and two rotten ones and a, and a kumquat, and then you walk by your boss's office, and they, she throws you a, a cantaloupe. <laughs> That's good. So now you got the cantaloupe and the apples and a kumquat, et cetera, and then you notice that some high-maintenance colleague of yours, you know, kind of throws down a pineapple out of a tree or whatever, and it's on fire, by the way, and so it's on fire, and you're juggling all this stuff, and you're kind of doing this and bouncing all this stuff around, et cetera. And then you get a call from your spouse or other significant other and, uh, and shares with you what kind of amounts to a, like a grape. It's just a little grape, see? But you've got all this other stuff, see? And so the grape, you've been kind of going down, you know, and, that, and the grape is the thing that kills you, you know? It's the grape, you know? It's, it's that kind of a thing. And so your poor loved one, is dead. <laughs> you know, there's no way you're going to be able to deal with it. My makeup just came off on the stage, by the way. How do I look? And, and so I'm going to offer you, I, I guess, a way of thinking about this. It's a model, all right? And, and the first model is fairly simple. Get a grip. Get a grip. Give yourself some slack. It's okay if you screw this little thing up. It's okay if somebody's got a little problem with what you just did. It's okay if you got 12 voicemails waiting for you. That's okay. Hey, swam the uh, swim with the sharks from Alcatraz Island over to Fisherman's Wharf. And uh, so the way this works is uh, they, it's a 1.4 mile swim, unfortunately in 57 degree water. And, and so, which means, by the way, you wear a wetsuit, but I'll talk about that in just a second. And they, and they take a couple of hundred of you over in a ferry. They take you right next to Alcatraz Island, and about 100 yards off the island, you jump into the water. So, I mean, I, when I jumped off the ferry, <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I jumped off the ferry, I, I mean, you're, you're like probably 15 feet off the water, and so you jump in, and, and of course you sink. 
Well, when you wear like what amounts to two and a half wetsuits, you're like a cork, you know? And so what happens is you get below the water and before you can even think about it, the, the natural buoyancy of the, of the wetsuit brings you right back up. So you kind of shoot out of the water, you know? And, and you suddenly realize my problem is not gonna be hypothermia. Okay, my problem is not gonna be drowning. My problem is gonna be I'm so high in the water, I might be blown to sea, you know? And so, and so, and your swimming behavior isn't too pretty either, you know, so do you remember that, do you remember that kid in Christmas story and he's got all that, all the winter clothes on and so the bullies always pick on him and everything? That's me swimming, okay, so I'm wearing this wetsuit and I'm kind of swimming like this and, and what they do is they assign a, a, a kayaker to every 10 swimmers. So we wind up out in the middle of the, of the shipping channel, okay, of San Francisco Bay. And, you know, Paul is just dutifully following me, you know, looking at his watch once in a while. And so, as we're out there, this, this light uh, freighter, probably 150 feet long, or so, you know, so they service islands and things like that, you know, cement and dry goods, et cetera, comes by. But when you're, when you're, you know, when you're like this much in the water and a freighter comes by, I mean, it's way up there, see? So anyway, so as we go by this sailor, this sailor up on the freighter, sees this going on. He sees me swimming along all alone. There's nobody else swimming near us, see, and, and the kayaker behind him, and, and uh, behind me, and so he pulls, he pulls out an electronic megaphone, and he yells down to me, do you know where you are? <laughs> you know? And so, and so I, I made like I didn't understand him. I go, <laughs> you know, like that. And then I look back at Paul, and, and Paul kind of went, you know, like that, you know? I made it, but it was not easy. And so uh, th that's a case of, of really not being entirely attentive to what was going on around me. You know, in other words, I should have you know, focused on, on the fact that I was alone out there. And, and although it worked out, and I'm afraid sometimes in life we, we wind up not seeing the windows of opportunity. You know, we don't see the environmental cues around us as to what we might be able to do or what might that look like. And also, by the way, one of my personal heroes uh, is probably Woody Allen. Uh, I've always respected his uh, focus on the family and his ethical behavior. <laughs> but uh, he, he has always said, no matter where you are, be there. You know? We've already kind of visited that concept earlier. And so it's, it's kind of an interesting situation, but nonetheless something we've got to get on.